Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your marriage feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about three unrealistic expectations in marriage. My guest, April, shared her story as part of the five-day Adored Wife Challenge in January, and she courageously agreed to let me share it with you on the podcast today. She and her husband were both sober when they met, but a few years in, she found out he was hanging out at a local bar during the day, which caused a lot of fighting. But today, she's so grateful for all the ways her husband makes her life wonderful. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. That's coming up. But first, let's talk about the top three unrealistic expectations in marriage. Because getting married and expecting it to look a certain way and then getting so let down when it's not is discouraging and can even put your marriage at risk. These are the top three expectations that I know I had in my marriage and that still come up for me sometimes and for many of our students too. So see if you also identify with having these unrealistic expectations. One of the most insidious ones for me is number one, doing lots of chores and housework is the way to be a good wife. Early on, I thought that my efforts to keep a nice home and cook great meals and do his laundry and run all the errands and make his doctor's appointments, all of that made me such a good wife. And I was just doing so much to earn his love and and earn his appreciation by working hard at home and at work and putting hot meals on that table uh, at dinner time every night. You know, like he really scored a great wife because I could just rattle those pots and pans every night. It wasn't long before I resembled a refrigerator magnet that a friend got for me that had a 1950s housewife on it holding a casserole. And it said, the secret ingredient is resentment. That's exactly what was going into all the meals that I was making too. And for some reason, this did not get me a grateful kiss and a hug or a pat on the butt like I expected, but actually a very distant husband. He didn't seem to appreciate anything I was doing for him at all. And I sure didn't feel loved or desired and I couldn't work any harder than I was already working. I was already so tired. And then I found out about respect and what it really means, which was not what I thought at all. And I started being respectful to him. And I also found out about expressing my desires and honoring my limits. And I stopped doing most of the chores, most of them. He does about 90% of everything now. And I'm just grateful and happy and out playing volleyball or arranging the tea packets in my tea caddy or playing Wordle. And now he's crazy about me and so appreciative of what little I do around here, which seems like hardly anything. I'm a high maintenance wife who hasn't done the dishes or used a vacuum in decades. And he is so in love with me. So the idea that I would get love as a result of how much I did, that was completely unrealistic. He just Loves me anyway, I think, because I'm so lovable and cute and I let him do things for me and I let him give me presents. And that was not what I expected. Number two unrealistic expectation is that Valentine's Day will be so romantic, so romantic. And sure, it's it's only one day of the year. But when it comes to heavy expectations, I think Valentine's Day is a standout. It's a heavy hitter, right? These days, I mostly feel like every day is Valentine's Day uh, at my house. And John is great about always getting me flowers and chocolates and a card on February 14th. Now, this year, I also said, I'll make us dinner and we could eat together uh, at home, which is what we do most nights of the week anyway, but this was going to be a Valentine's Day dinner, whatever that means. But John's brother was at our house that afternoon. It was a Tuesday. And if it hadn't been Valentine's Day, I probably would have said, hey, 
you know, your brother can stay for dinner if he wants. Um, but I felt some pressure that we had to have this romantic dinner as a couple, since I'm Laura Doyle, relationship expert. And then John took his brother home, and that took longer than I expected. And instead of doing my thing, I was waiting for him to come home so we could fulfill my expectation that we would have a romantic dinner as a couple. So by the time he got home, I was hangry and crabby, and I let him know I was waiting for him that whole time. And he apologized and said, well, I'm here now. And I thought we were going to have a nice Valentine's dinner together. And I was like, no, no, we're not. Now it's too late because you took too long. So we had a tense Valentine's Day dinner instead. And it took the entire meal for me to recover and regain my dignity. I reminded myself of my mother on her worst day, even though I've been practicing the intimacy skills for decades. So I didn't think crazy, stupid Valentine's Day could just trip me up like that. But it turns out I'm still a mere mortal woman. The number three unrealistic expectation for marriage is that he should know what I want, even though I have no idea what I want. And I don't know where I got this idea that if I was unhappy, it was my husband's job to fix that. But that's what I thought early on. And I'm not the only one. A student named Catherine told me her birthday was coming up and that her husband always let her down on birthdays. Every year, they didn't do anything fun. And her husband seemed to really struggle to even acknowledge the day or get her a present. But when I asked her what she wanted for her birthday, she struggled herself. She said, you know, we would do something. We'd we'd go somewhere special. And when I asked her, like, what and where, she didn't know. So I invited her to dream about what a great birthday would look like. And she decided she wanted to go to a nearby coastal city for the day for a hike and to have lunch at a seafood restaurant that had great reviews. She felt happy just thinking about what a fun day that would be. And then she expressed that desire to her husband. And and this is key. She did it without expectations, without expectations. Just knowing what would make her happy had gone a long way to erasing that feeling of resentment and desperation and disappointment that she'd been having around her birthday. Now, to her surprise, He found the perfect hike in that city. He made reservations at the seafood restaurant. He got the car filled up uh, and ready to take her there. He also got her some essential oils that she'd mentioned she would love and a beautiful necklace that he thought of all by himself. Now, instead of expecting him to know how to make her happy and then being resentful when he failed, she dug deep to figure out what would delight her. And once he knew what to do, he was glad to be her hero. What expectations are realistic in marriage? Well, it's your birthright as a woman to be cherished, to be taken care of, and to be adored. And around here, we're not giving up until you get all of that, even if you're not expecting it. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. Okay, April's been patiently standing by. April, come on back. We'd love to um, see you now back on camera, if you can come back on. Um, And I cannot wait to hear your story. Thank you so much for joining me as part of the challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Just period. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I know you hear that all the time, but um, yeah, I think my, my husband was here, he would be thanking you also. 
Yeah. So sweet. I'm totally yeah. taking that in. Thank you, April. Thank yeah, you. it's really true. <laughs> wow. Well, um, I can't wait to hear the whole story. How long have you been married? God, so we've been married six years. We've been together eight years. Um, we met on Tinder, as funny as that sounds. Oh, um, no. It's, that's how everyone <laughs> meets now, I think, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were both like newly sober when we met. And uh, anyone that knows anything about that, it brings in this level of like stability when you kind of get off that roller coaster of living that way. Um, that is almost unexplainable to your experience yourself from my perspective, at least. Yeah. Um, so, so big life changing event for both of you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And probably a lot of connection around being on a similar path. Yes. Yes. Time. That's really true. Um, yeah. It was very, uh, it, we were both kind of in a frame of mind, like what else is there to do? You know? Yeah. And exploring life and exploring each other and our relationship. And, and we had so many years of just that, um, like so many years that like, we never, never argued. Like it was, I almost felt embarrassed at the amount that we never argue. It's, it's so crazy. Cause I would hear people talking about their relationship and I would just be quiet. Like, well, we never argue, you know, in my mind thinking, you know, it was great. It was something I never experienced before. And, and we had probably four years, five years like that. That it's sounds just, wonderful. That yeah. sounds amazing, April. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Um, well, and then after those four or five years, um, well, then, then what happened? Then we had like, uh, we both made like very big life changes. Um, he started at, uh, business. Um, like he restarted an old business basically. And I was in nursing school and I don't know if you know anything about nursing school, but very it, demanding from what I've heard. Yeah. Very I mean, it takes demanding. up like 60 hours a week of your life. Like, wow. That's what it really does. And, um, and then he was like just incredibly stressed from, uh, his new business starting up and, and, uh, wait, one thing I actually want to throw in is that the only time that we ever argued, and I never realized this before, <laughs> was if he was like explaining something to me and I was trying to be helpful, you know, <laughs> because I am a total people pleaser. And wow. so being helpful is like my thing, you know, like right. That. Right. I taught yoga for many years. So people always come to me and like talk to me about stuff. And, and then I just was, have always been in situations career wise where I spend a lot of time one on one also with people. So like helpful was just, it's a disease that I have. <laughs> well, and kind of a core value in a way too, it sounds like, right? Yeah. I think helpful, it really does come from a good intention, right? Yes. To be yes. helpful. It's not like malicious, No. Um, but no. what a great insight. It sounds yeah. like you're having in retrospect that. Yes. Um, and I'm super, maybe overly sensitive to how somebody is and how they're feeling and, um, uh, and maybe feeling responsible for it in certain ways, you know, like I can help, I can, you know, what can I do to make things better for this person instead of realizing yeah. that maybe they're capable of being able to figure this out for themselves. And there's something really golden there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I said, well, it sounds like you've got lots of great insights and awareness yeah. now, but yeah. Tell us yeah. about what, so what was happening while he's restarting his business. You're in nursing school. Yeah. You're both kind of yeah. stressed and overwhelmed. Stressed, what, overwhelmed. What was going wrong? Um, things, you know, alcohol started making its way back in a little bit, just like maybe one or two on the weekends. And, you know, just uh, that just makes me feel unstable. Just it just does. <laughs> it brings it right. and right. it makes me overthink things that maybe I would never, never overthink. So it totally puts me in net, you know, <laughs> like I, I just dive in there. 
some and needless start, emotional turmoil or net yeah. for short. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and just start overthinking things. And, um, and then he has his own history with when that stuff starts coming in, that's like on his page, but probably added to the net, um, you know, without going into like crazy detail about it, but it, but, but I found myself in a situation where I would start like asking a million questions about like, you know, what are you doing? What's going on? Like all these questions were me trying to figure out how to protect myself from being overly stressed, from going back into another way of how we used to live before we ever met. Um, that was like very triggering for me. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and this kind of spiraled for a little while, like this yeah. spiraled, it really came to a head at a certain point. Um, because I found out, <laughs> I figured out that he was hanging out at a local bar <laughs> during the weekdays. Um, and that just made me go into like, like, I mean, spiral, just spiral into like, it's Tuesday morning, you know, <laughs> like, What's that happening? Sounds terrifying. Right? Yeah, it was it was very, very scary, scary and it definitely triggered everything in me that can possibly get triggered. And it put me on his page 100% of the time. Mm. And so were you um were you guys having fights about this then or uh, yeah, yeah, we were having yeah. fights about it. Um we um, we do have, I have someone that I speak to, I call him my spiritual therapist because he's like intuitive and, um, he's very, very good at being able to disarm things and help us get on the same page with what we're, what's the foundation of what we both want. Um, he does, he's kind of, he's different than he's not, he's just different. So he, he helped us through a lot of emergency situations, um, but I found it very temporary and then we would kind of go back into a lot of the same old, uh, me being, I really did not realize how much me being overly helpful was so damaging to our relationship. Right. Right. It was, it would trigger him, um, to no end. And I remember being like, I'm like, I feel like you think I'm treating you like you're, uh, not intelligent or something when I think you're so intelligent, like I'm just trying to help. I, I could not understand it. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, why is he overreacting so yeah. much? Or, yeah. what, what, did it, what did I even say that yes. would upset him? I had yeah. no clue at all whatsoever. Like, but, but he was upset. Sounds like. He was really upset. Like, and it, and this really caused a very big disconnect between us. Like yeah. as soon as we would start, things would start getting good. Like, of course, here I have to come in being helpful again about, you know, he's just talking to me about something about work and I'm trying to fix it. And he, does not want me to fix it. Like I'm telling you, he does not, everything I would name he already tried anyway. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was there a point where you thought, you know, we can't go on like this or this is not, we're not going to make it or. Yeah. I mean, those were like, if I went there in my thinking, I wanted to like vomit. Like that was, I didn't quite get to a point where I felt like I was giving up. Um, but I did know that, uh, I knew that we had so many, we had a foundation of really feeling connected and, and, um, feeling that way. So stable that like, I just never thought anything, you know? And so I knew we could get there. I knew, I knew that the good outweighed the bad for sure in our your, relationship. You, your faith was always there that, yeah. that you guys yeah. were going to make it. Yeah. And so, so really it was just more of a quest to find out how to um, get back the peace that you'd had earlier. Yeah. It sounds like, and yes. uh, yeah. And to kind of end the, put an end to the painful conversations and yes. arguments. Yeah. 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 I was willing to try anything, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, really, I mean, I tried many, I can't tell you how many <laughs> books, how many, I mean, you know, it's endless. Like, the, <sighs> speaking to my spiritual guy, like I was talking to him constantly and he helped me so much, like look at myself and figure out, you know, 
just my triggers, my things, but like, I just needed steps. I needed something like concrete to like, I just needed someone to say to me, this is what you need to do, <laughs> you know? And that kind of wasn't his style, uh, even though I still speak to him less, yeah. much less often, but that he wasn't like a, one to tell me exactly what to do. And I needed that. Yeah. yeah. Well, how, how did you first discover the six intimacy skills? So I actually have a friend that, uh, well, she was a, I'm also an esthetician and a nurse and I have a lot of, a lot of things. I'm an aesthetic nurse. So I had someone that came in that she has been telling me about you for like a year and a half. But when she first told me about you, I think she mentioned the surrendered wife um book and i was just like no (laughs) like i was that was the last thing i wanted to hear you know and and just the way she described it to me it it wasn't it didn't hit anything like right at that moment in time and and but she did keep talking about it i saw her every couple of months for um you know for the over that next year and a half and and there was just one day last summer that she started talking about it and talk, telling me about like all the things that she was doing and how it's changed her relationship and on and on and on. And she told me about your podcast and I was like, Oh, you know what? Yeah, I could listen to this podcast. Let me listen to this podcast. And so I started from like your very first podcast. Um, I went from oldest, you know, and, um, and just started listening to that. And that started getting me really excited, like for the first time, because I, I think I was sort of like numbed out for a while, like mm-hmm. a little beaten down that or in needless emotional turmoil, or just like numb, you know, it was yeah. that's kind of where I lived for for quite a period of time. Well, it sounds like, um, uh you were feeling a little bit hopeless about how to fix it. Like you tried everything you could think of and read all the books and talked to the people and yeah. Um, and now, and now what? Right. Yeah. So it's a, it's a reasonable thing to, to try to just, you know, just get by somehow. Yeah. 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 It's painful. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you were open though. You started listening to the podcast. Yeah. I started listening to the podcast and I immediately started implementing. I also, downloaded the book right away, The Empowered Wife. And I just was, uh, I gobbled it up and I immediately started, uh, I I put on my duct tape and I stopped being helpful. And I, and I stopped saying, like, once I stopped being helpful, that started cutting out so many things that I was normally going to say that, uh, that there was even a lot of periods of time where there was like just nothing being said, you know, just like maybe just being present in the moment quietly. And if we're on our bikes going down to the beach, I live in Manhattan beach, by the way. So our lives revolve around beach volleyball, like yours, and (laughs) we're on our electric bikes and we're going down to the beach and, you know, so uh, when you talk about beach volleyball, that's our sweet spot, you know, that's our thing that we do together and we love it. So we might be on the bikes, just not talking. We might be sitting next to each other on the beach, waiting for a game and not, you know, that maybe we're just enjoying the sand, enjoying the sun and being more present in the moment. And, um, and, and I also immediately started like being very respectful like of everything that he thought that he was saying. Um, And that is a total 360 from trying to fix his problems for him, you know, and that, that immediately just started changing so much between us. Wow. Now, how did you do that? I love, I love that you brought this respect so quickly. I think you were really open yeah he actually uh i didn't tell him anything about listening to you and he started um uh he saw the podcast downloaded because we share like an account (laughs) he's like what's this empowered wife thing that you're what is that (laughs) and i'm like you know one of my clients asked me uh told me about it and Basically, it's just something that's helping me to like take a look at myself and kind of recognize like all the things in my life that I have to be 
grateful for in our relationship. And it's made me realize how much I respect you. So I like straight out told him that. And, um, you know, mm, just like how much yeah. you do for our family. It actually opened an opportunity for me to um, start naming all the things that he does, you know, and all the way he shows up. Oh, and, and then I just from that moment started like constantly telling him, thank you for like, wow, I can't believe like what you've done with this business. Like he grew his business exponentially in a very short amount of time. Um, uh, cause he builds swimming pools <laughs> and with COVID happening and everything, like it, it was like just in crazy, you know? So he, he's done like incredible, you know? So there's just so many ways for me to like name all the ways that he has been, um, doing things for us and our family to change our lives and, and change things that we're able to do and, and all that. So I really got very focused on that. Wow. Yeah. I love it. So stopped being helpful. He started um, telling him how much you respect him. Mm -hmm. And I also really heard this silence, like just listening, being in the moment. Mm -hmm. Was that, was that challenging for you? Like, yes. how do you think? <laughs> yeah, that was so <laughs> challenging. But then I realized, and this took a little while, it didn't happen right away. Uh, but I realized that um, that by fulfill, by stating my desires, it was helping me release ways that I was feeling pent up with, like feeling like I had duct tape on, you know? Yes. So yes. I, Cause sometimes I, I think I was maybe mistaking that in the beginning. We're thinking like the duct tape was like, I couldn't express and expressing to me is so important. But actually, I can express in such a healthy way. I just needed to refocus. Yeah. yeah. So that's a great distinction. So the duct tape was, um, it, it was feeling a little oppressive, it sounds yes. like, because there was, there were desires that you had that weren't getting expressed at first. Yes. And then you kind of, uh, you know, made that distinction and strengthened your skills. And mm -hmm. then you were able to express yourself uh, mm -hmm. in a way that uh, inspired him expressing yes. his desires. And um, yeah. And then I, and I, I love that you were also bringing, um, it sounds like a lot of gratitude. Yes. So much husband. gratitude. Yeah. So even still, we actually have a, we'll like sit down and go over things that we, that have just been happening, like even just monthly, not like make a big deal out of it, but uh it's, it's actually pretty fun. I have this like little book where I just write things down and just keep track of like just great things that maybe happen throughout the month, like as a way for us to reflect, you know, and he loves it. He loves it. I love it too. Cause it sounds like what I hear you saying is I'm so focused on all the good things in our lives and the good things about my husband. I write them all down and then we review them once a month. Which, yeah. What a brilliant practice, right? Yeah. To really have your focus be on the things you want to experience instead of the yes. things you don't want to experience. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that. Really fun. Well, great job with implementing all those skills. It sounds like um, there was a little bit of trial and error, and um, but you really kind of found a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. What's your relationship like now? Our relationship is amazing. Like... He actually, had, he like, I, of course, I joined the, the group, basically. The, the, I uh, like, ridiculously happy wife group? Yeah, because I need, I have to, like, keep, I have to keep going back because it's very easy to go back into my old patterns. So I need the support of the community to just keep myself accountable um, and, you know, and that, but like our relationship now, like, so like one of my self-fulfilling prophecies was that I really like, he will like, I love morning cuddles, you know, and I get money morning cuddles like every single morning and then some like not to, not for t too much TMI, but really it's like our, that part of our lives has like completely changed totally. Um, we have so much intimacy between us. I am never, ever, ever trying to um, fix anything. And like he has shared things with me about himself, even most recently, that like th that would probably be scary 
for any guy to share with anybody. And, uh, and that just, and he told me that he was like talking to our boys the other day. Uh, we, I have my son and his two sons and he was like talking to them and telling them like how you really want to be in a relationship, like that you can just be yourself in that relationship and make sure that you can like talk about the, the weird stuff that you might not talk about with other people. And so like hearing him that he was sharing that with the boys is just so exciting, you know? He was acknowledging you. He was yeah. saying, that's, who I, that's what I have. And I yeah. want, that's what I want for you guys too. Yeah. That made you feel like a million bucks. What it really did. Help. And, you know, I, I do also, one thing I want to say is that when we very first started this, uh, I, I felt like immediately I could see him responding, you know, and then it seemed like there was a little period of time after a few weeks where, you know, it seemed like, all right, just stick with the skills, stick with the skills, you know, and he, I, I don't know if it felt like a leveling off or like nothing major was really happening. And I, I looking back on it now, like I realized that I think he wasn't sure if he could trust how much things were changing, you know, is this really real? And um, so I, I definitely feel like that little period of time existed. And then he realized this is real because I really just stuck with it. Like I was not, not sticking with it. <laughs> um, yeah. So pretty he to realize it is real. And then when he realized it is real, then he started relaxing into it even more. And things really just started like, turning around so like it, well, another thing that he does he does he used to complain about like how I would do the laundry <laughs> and tell me that he would do it but I would just do it anyway it sounds so insane you know <laughs> he was offering to do the laundry ladies like <laughs> why am I standing in his way like so I started letting him do, do the laundry and he does all the laundry now. All like, the laundry. All of it. For five people or for no, no, just the two of you? Two of us. Two of you. Our okay. Boys are all older. So. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But, but still, um, he does your laundry now. He does all <laughs> our laundry, all of it. And, and I, and it's amazing. Like, that is amazing. What was I fighting? <laughs> like, I look back and I'm like, Jesus, like, come on. So you, it sounds like you feel cherished so cherished like like we're going on a vacation next week that he spearheaded you know because i that was a desire of mine that i'm like oh i'm dying to go on vacation just you and i i would love that and he and he sat down he's like all right let's plan it and um, he's in charge of the money he started a vacation fund for us um, so, and then he like went into my account online and like renamed my account, the vacation fund so that I can see that's our vacation fund. Wow. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. We have a He's house that makes you happy. He's like, this is oh. how I can make April happy. So I'm doing yes. it. Yeah. Yes. 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 Wow. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. He really does. If I tell him I want something or I would love something, uh, he wants me to have it like he and especially right now like <laughs> like he really wants me to have it um yeah when you say especially right now you mean like I why, mean, cause why, he why right now I guess because the yeah. way we connect with each other is how we've never connected before like he put so much time and effort into Christmas this year um and Christmas shopping and wrapping all these gifts and, and I would come home and there's all these presents wrapped underneath the tree and he hung all the lights outside. And I mean, yeah, he just really, um, you know, if I ask for something, he, he does it. And, and if he doesn't, he doesn't, I'm, that's it. You know, yeah. I stated it happens or it doesn't. And that's it. But it sounds pretty obvious. He likes being your hero. Yeah. He, he wants you to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so how about the arguing? Is that still going on or? Nope. <laughs> no, we do not argue. Um, if, you know, if, if there's anything I might say, ouch, you know, he knows, ouch, actually he knows, ouch so much that now I'm like, yowch, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yowch, not just ouch. <laughs> yowch. I say it like, 
like a cartoon character or something. <laughs> And we both start cracking up, like, because we realize it immediately. <laughs> so this is very girl of fun and light. Like, you're just kind of playing and relaxing yes. and, and saying, ouch. Yes. But, uh, so when you started saying, ouch, how did he respond to that? Or Yeah, when, uh, when I very first started saying it, he goes, you know, I like the word, ouch, because it's making me realize that I need to treat you a little bit better than maybe I've been treating you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, That's he said. He those said. Words. God, Isn't I that... can actually cry remembering that. I forgot all about that. Yeah, yeah. very tender yeah. and kind of the words we all want to hear from our husbands. And there's yeah. your husband saying it to you. Yeah, pretty magical moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know what, April? I give you all the credit because that sounds like you were very vulnerable. Yeah, I tried to be. Yeah, it yeah. takes a lot of courage. Yeah. Yeah. This whole thing <laughs> takes a lot of courage, right? Yeah, I mean, you've been very brave. It really does. It's like you have to just, you really do have to trust that what you're doing is the right way to do it. And you have to place that trust before the fears. Um, and in order to see that trust transpire in your life. And when you do, it really does transpire. But like if I start going too much into my fears, it brings me right to them. So, um, you know, and, and that's on my page and that is clear as day when that is happening. So um, you're choosing your focus wisely. It sounds like you're being really careful about what yes. you're focusing on all day long yes. Yes. and which voices you're letting into your ear to influence that focus. Yes. Sounds like yes. Yeah. We're also um both of us are we're back. We eat neither of us, we've been sober for like over a year and a half now again. So oh. that also is beautiful, you know, and that is congratulations. You know, yeah. My own choice for me and his own choice for him separately. Versus like April's choice for him or his choice yeah. for April yeah. kind of thing. Oh yeah, because I wanted that to be my choice for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, because I was only trying to help out, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just see you how know, you want to be helpful and help him stop drinking again, get sober. Yeah, again, right. <laughs> yeah, and and how is that working when you were? Oh my God, so much better! Like so much, <laughs> like uh, yeah. I I had to get off his page, and and recently he actually said to me, he goes, you know, it's crazy how when uh, it's my decision, how it's so easy for me to talk to people about. Um, you know, the fact that he's sober and all that. it was actually, we always used to talk about that. Then we stopped talking about it. Then if I started talking about it as like, we're sober, it was a trigger for him, you know? He and heard so the I, you he, and we, right? Yeah, so, why am yeah. I talking? Why am I speaking for him? You know? And I stopped doing that completely. And, uh, and now he's like, Boy, you know, when it's my own decision and it's it's crazy when your mindset changes how I don't care about talking about it at all anymore, you know? Wow. So that is it, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. This is really cool. So I would love to hear your tip. Like let's say somebody is saying, um, we're arguing a lot and maybe even I wish he would get sober kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um and she wants what you have now where there's cuddles in the morning and a vacation fund. And he says, I really need to treat you better. Um, yeah. When you say, ouch, what's your best tip for her? Like, what should she do? Yeah. I mean, of course, self-care and you know, that even you get so much self-care, like automatic time automatically when you're not being so helpful. So big time so, saver, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge time saver. All the energy is like, is very replenishing, you know? So I started meditating right away because I needed to still my mind from the needless emotional turmoil. And that helped me a lot was um, that listening to audio books, like was part of my self care. Um, and then maybe like, you know, something like with touch, like a massage or a pedicure or things like that. Um, of course, beach volleyball, but that's like our thing that we do together, but still it's self care and it's, you know, I jones for it all the time. Oh my gosh. But um, also, uh, just respect, like offering respect every chance that you can, you know, that like he is capable, like, 
you know, he's capable of, like you say, dressing himself, but like he's capable of when I started being in gratitude for all the things and all the ways that he was showing up and, and voicing that to him, it created the voicing. It really um, magnified it for us. Um, so showing him every day that I respected him that much and I recognized all the things he was doing um, really transformed our relationship. And then, the, you know, the duct tape for the being helpful, that really fell away much easier than I thought it would. Mm. I still have to catch myself, but. Well, sure. You're a mere mortal <laughs> person, right? So, yeah. Yeah. But this is so wise. I just want to hit that again because I, I love it. It's really, I hear that gratitude was a big key for you. Huge. Just focusing on all the things you are grateful for about your husband and focus choosing that instead of the things that like maybe he was he was drinking he wasn't sober yeah. or he whatever yes. he wasn't doing that yes. was that was big it, it really put me in a in a energy of affluence when i'm in gratitude i already have it yeah. so i don't feel like a, any emptiness in a way it sort of brings it in already mm -hmm. I, I already have it Great job. Great job. That sounds, uh, yeah, I think that sounds really wise. What, what do you think you would say to April if you could go back in time and tell her what you know now? <laughs> um, I mean, that, I mean, I would really want myself to know that being overly helpful is sending a message to the people around you that they're not capable of doing it themselves or you, or I don't think they're capable of that. And that I'm robbing them of the, the, the joy of their own self-fulfillment, you know? And so that, that particular piece for me was enormous because um, it really, uh, I mean, it's a generational thing in my family. <laughs> <laughs> my grandmother, my mother, me, like it's, this is. <laughs> and why it honestly, this helpful. We're all really so. great at being helpful, <laughs> overly helpful. <laughs> um, yeah. So I would, de that was very much a huge, maybe the biggest thing for me. And then a lot of other things fell in place after that. Um, yeah, that's the biggest, biggest one. Yeah, that's a great insight too. Um, and what, and all your boys are grown. It sounds like your three, yeah. in, has this had any impact on those grown boys? You think? Oh, I definitely think it has an impact on them. Yeah. Because he, it, well, because it's creating an environment where, um, I think we're both feeling like we're being ourselves a lot more. And that becomes just so invitational to the kids to be themselves around us, you know? Mm. So, and mm. especially if we're allowing space for them to um, step up by not having to fix everything. Wow. That just gave me chills. So everyone yeah. in your family gets to just be themselves. Yeah. It sounds like there's tremendous emotional safety for everyone. Yes. Yes. And, and work, I actually feel like it influenced um, me at work. I keep getting asked to be there more, take on more responsibility, do like it, it just keeps going with that. Even as today, she was like, you know, if you want to work even one more day, you could. And I don't. <laughs> <laughs> right care day like could interfere with self-care you could be playing volleyball that day yeah I have days that are like all day self-care days you know and that's fridays so yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like you're feeling like uh you're an irresistible magnet kind of all around work your yes. your kids your husband yeah yeah yes, yes i love awesome. that <laughs> right that is who doesn't want that so yes who doesn't want wow. that <laughs> well i mean in this story i really hear um how committed and dedicated what a good student you've been of the skills like what mm -hmm. how much you have um practiced them and just um i'm sure it didn't start out perfectly but you sound pretty masterful now so mm -hmm. uh, well done kudos to you yeah. for for fixing your family that's a big mm -hmm. deal 
<laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, really, I, truly, really, really, truly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, this is great getting to hear your whole story and having you <laughs> share so authentically with us. So thank you so much. What thank a gift. You. <laughs> thank you so yeah. much. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll talk about marriage and money, how to handle finances in marriage. And in the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that when we finally opened our Valentine's cards to each other, my husband and I had picked out the exact same one with two crabs on the front. Very appropriate. <laughs>